guys, so today I'm going to be doing a much requested video, I'm going to be doing an updated perfume collection. Now I did a bathroom tour, it must have been a couple of months ago now, in which I kind of showed my shelf where I kept my perfumes, and a lot of you said can I see a perfume collection or an updated one, because I did one it's probably like two years ago now. Um, however, that is what I'm doing in this video, and I'm going to start right away in no particular order. I do have quite a lot of perfumes, just a bit of a disclaimer. Um, I am really fickle with perfumes, I think I have about 16 or 17 open, which I know you don't need that many perfumes, it's kind of crazy, but obviously I'm a beauty blogger, it's kind of what I do, um, and I do actually use them all. If I don't use a perfume, um, I tend to kind of give it to my friends or my mum or my sister, um, so I don't kind of waste them, I do kind of get through them. Anyway, I'm going to start. The first ones, I'm going to tell you about my Jo Malone perfume because I have three Jo Malone perfumes and I love all of them. My most favourite is the Jo Malone Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. This, to me, something about it smells like sun cream, I always say this. It's not meant to smell like sun cream, it's meant to be a lot more sophisticated than that, obviously. Um, but it's really lovely, it's a beautiful kind of fresh yet yeah, creamy summer daytime scent. I generally only wear this in the summer because for me I just feel like it is so summery. Um, but I do really love it. It doesn't seem to last very long which is very strange because um, it is part of the line, I can't remember, oh Cologne Intense actually says on the front, it's part of the Cologne Intense line which it does have a very intense fragrance when you first spray it but it doesn't last like some of my other perfumes which surprised me for a Cologne Intense. Um, but I do love it, it's like my favourite favourite scent from Jo Malone. And I love the black bottle too. And then I have two other scents from Jo Malone, but they're both in the smaller 30ml bottles. I have English Pear and Freesia, which was actually a gift from my friend Ingrid. Um, this is a lot more kind of fruity. It does have that floral note in it with the Freesia, but I find Freesia to be quite a fresh floral scent rather than that kind of sickly, um, overpowering floral. You'll notice I don't have a lot of floral uh, or strong florals in my perfume collection, but I love that. Um, and I did use... I used up the first like two thirds in a few months and then I don't use it that much anymore. Um, every now and again I'll use it though and I do really like it. It's more of a kind of spring summer scent again. And then Pomegranate Noir which is a classic scent from Jo Malone. Very strong, quite sexy, um, quite sour. I haven't actually used this in a little while but I tend to use it more in the winter around Christmas. It's a very kind of spicy scent um, but really really lovely anyway. I actually love the home and body products from Jo Malone in Pomegranate Noir because it is a very, um, it's a lovely fragrance to have as a home fragrance as well as perfume. If you're not into wearing very, very strong scents like that as perfume, it works really well as a home fragrance. And then I have one fragrance from Vera Wang. This was in my last monthly favourites video, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. It's Love Struck. It is very strong. It lasts all day. Floral but not sickly again. Lovely. Love the bottle and yeah. I just like this a lot. The next ones will come as no surprise to those of you who have watched my video for a long time. I have both of the Taylor Swift perfumes. The first one is Wonderstruck and the other one is Enchanted Wonderstruck. They look the same, they smell a little different, they're very fruity, very fresh, very young, fun. I like wearing these kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. I do actually have a signed bottle um, of the original one struck, which I got when I met Taylor, which I'll put a close-up in here now because it's actually over there and I don't want to move and then have to refocus my camera. Um, but that actually doesn't get used. I have this bottle which I use, um, but my signed one is like my precious one that sits on my desk because I love Taylor Swift and her perfume is really good as well. She's actually bringing out a new one which I'm excited to try. It's called... Um, I think it's called Taylor by Taylor Swift. Excited to try that anyway. The next one is actually the main contender for my wedding fragrance, and it's actually by the same designer as my wedding dress, which is kind of an influence in making me kind of want to wear it for my wedding day, but I also really, really love it. As you can see, I've used up about a third of it. It is a big bottle too. This, I think it's 100ml? 90ml. It's the Rheum Acre Eau de Parfum. This is probably my most grown-up perfume that I have. It is... Kind of, there's something about it that is slightly kind of Middle Eastern, it's quite strong and kind of a little sexy but very very feminine at the same time. I don't off the top of my head remember the notes of this at all but it is a kind of warm scent. I would say this is a slightly older scent if you are kind of in your teens or early 20s. You might not like this but if you are into kind of more adult scents this would be a great one to gift at for mums I think because even though I love it too obviously like scents don't really have an age but 
it is a more kind of mature scent. It's definitely my most grown up one anyway, but that is really macro. I love the bottle as well. I think it's very, very classic. Next up is a perfume that actually holds a really special place in my heart and I never really wear it anymore. It was in my last perfume collection. It's Vivian Westwood's Let It Rock and this was actually the first perfume that Mike bought me. He bought it for me probably two weeks after we started going out, so really, really early on, and I wore it like religiously for the time after he gave it to me, probably for like the three or four months after he gave it to me. So it really reminds me of that time in our relationship when we were first getting to know each other and like first together. And when I spray this, it's almost like a take me back moment. So I don't really wear it as my perfume anymore, but it's, I find smell is so strongly linked to memory for me at least, that I just love spraying this and it just reminds me of that time in our lives. And it's a really happy time. So um, yeah, Vivian Westwood Let It Rock. It does actually smell really good as well. Again, it's quite spicy, a bit more kind of edgy a scent. It's not so girly, but love it. And the bottle is really cool. The next one is probably one of the oldest perfumes in my collection. It's Love Chloe. My one is actually broken. It has this gorgeous security chain that like links the lid to the bottle. And mine's broken a few times. I've fixed it a few times, but I haven't fixed it this time because it's only so much breaking you can deal with before you stop fixing things, I think, in this kind of situation. It's just not happening. But I really love this. It's actually a very powdery scent. It's really unlike any other of the perfumes that I own. Again, it's kind of mature. Some might say it's slightly grannyish. Anything that smells kind of powdery does kind of tend to get labelled with the granny label. Um, but for me, this is quite um, a kind of carefree, whimsical type scent that you would wear with flowing dresses and like maxi skirts and stuff. And I love the bottle for this because it does have the kind of rose gold and it's just very classic. And it's a great one for your handbag as well because it's quite a compact bottle. Next up, I have two Juicy Couture fragrances. I have the original Viva La Juicy in a humongous size. It's 100ml but the bottles are heavy so they feel really really heavy. I just love, love, love the packaging for these. And then I also have, make sure it's the right way around, my Viva La Juicy La Fleur. These are very, very similar. They're both lovely. This one's a little bit more kind of evening-y and I wear this one probably a bit more in the daytime. But I love them both and I love the bottles as well. So these are a great kind of dressing table um, staple. Next up is my Eccentric Molecules Molecule One perfume. This is like a cult beauty blogger thing in the UK. Everyone wears it. Everyone loves it. I've used up a lot of this. This is only a 30ml um, travel size but I've used it up a lot. It's Again, I've spoken about this in videos before. It's one of those scents that you aren't meant to be able to smell yourself, but everyone else can smell it, and everyone else loves it. It's meant to make you smell sexy. However, most of the people that comment on this when I wear it are women. If you're wondering where you can get eccentric molecules from, if you're based in London, you can pick it up in Liberties. If you're not based in London, you might struggle to be able to actually try it before you buy it. Um, but if you do want to kind of blind buy, you can get it on cultbeauty.co.uk and they ship internationally. Next up is my Elie Saab Le Parfum. Um, I absolutely loved this when I bought it. I think it was the summer before last that I bought it when it first came out. Again, it's a very feminine, kind of floaty, slightly more floral than I normally go for. I love the bottle. Um, I think they brought out an eau de toilette of this. Um, this lasts kind of a medium length. I wouldn't buy the eau de toilette because for me this isn't like a really strong eau de parfum anyway. It's a bit more of a kind of grown up, sophisticated scent. I tend to wear it if I'm like going out for dinner and things like that. Next is a perfume that I actually haven't used as much as I thought I would. It's the Corez Vanilla Freesia Lychee fragrance. I actually do really, really like this. It's very, very sweet to the point of like sugary sweet. If you don't like sweet perfumes, you won't like this. Um, but I thought I would wear it loads and I haven't. I've probably used up a tenth of it. Um, I'm definitely keeping it in my collection because I do really like it and I use it every now and again. But it hasn't been one of my staple perfumes. I think partly because I kind of became obsessed with a few other fragrances shortly after buying it. Um, so it didn't kind of stick around in my affections, if that makes sense. One of those fragrances that I have kind of totally fallen for and I'm in love with, this has been mentioned quite a lot recently because I haven't got it that long ago and I've already used half of it, um, it's the Fresh Sugar Lychee Perfume. I'm pretty sure I haven't even ever smelled anything as tasty smelling as this. It is so fruity, it's honestly like you smell like a delicious fruit cocktail. This is gonna be my like, number one summer, spring and summer scent. I bought it in April, so um, yeah. Spring and summer scent for me, love this. So this perfume is actually the most recent addition to my perfume collection. It's the Carven Le Parfum. Um, this was actually sent to me, and it's a perfume that I never, ever, 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 ever would have bought on first spray, or 
on description because it is almost exclusively floral and I never go for florals despite the fact that it is exclusively floral pretty much um, it is very fresh, very clean and very very feminine if you like floral fragrances I would definitely recommend this if you're on the fence like me I would also recommend this if you're looking for something a little bit more sophisticated but you don't tend to like the more sophisticated perfumes check this out the bottle is beautiful the scent is beautiful and this is the second runner-up kind of contender for my wedding day fragrance I haven't decided yet but this and the Remacra are like going against each other at the moment in my mind lovely I just love this it's so beautiful definitely an amazing spring and summer scent as well because it is very kind of fresh and fun and girly and then last but not least this is an oldie but a goodie it's my pixie eau de parfum a la fig perfume it's pixie fig it smells like figs like actual figs if you were to squash a fig and stick your nose in it it would smell like this it's so yummy I don't know about you guys like a lot of people wouldn't like this because it is quite I don't know quite direct in its scent it just smells like figs it has a little bit of a grassy tone to it as well so if you don't like that very kind of fresh garden kind of scent you may not like this but I love it it's great I don't tend to wear it on a daily basis but um, it's definitely one that I go back to and if you're hearing dog toy squeaking in the background that's because they are desperately trying to get into the room and cause mayhem so I had better go hope you guys enjoyed my perfume collection if you did don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already leave me a comment telling me what your favorite perfume is or if you have a recommendation that you think I might like based on what you guys have in your perfume collection then I would love that and I will see you in the next video bye okay so I'm gonna start at the beginning by taking through the door which is glass so it lets in a bit more light which is great and as you can see this is the